You guys requested how to make a baseline and operator. And to be honest, it's all the same. It's all the same steps in each synthesizer. They just sound a little bit different. And very important, as you can see, I make tutorials on the stuff you put in the comments if it fits. So whenever you have something which could be a nice topic for this channel and which is in your interest, I make a personal tutorial for you guys. You just need to put a comment in the comment. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because that helps me really to grow this channel and to make more cool videos for you guys. Today, we will create an amazing baseline in Ableton's operator and you will learn about how to select the right wave, how to set the filter and much more. So stay tuned. And that's what we will be creating. You want to turn your next track into a killer track? Then I created an amazing challenge for you guys. In 30 days, we will make a track together, which you can be proud of. So if you want to join us, we are starting already 14th of January. So if you want to take part in this, then click the link in the description box below and we see us at the challenge. Not all of it. We will just focus on operator here. Step number one, we need to select a wave. So we will go here into operator oscillator and then you can select a wave which you like you should usually use like a saw or you can also if you want to have like a square base a square wave but we will select saw d this one is really rich has all a saw wave it basically has all the uh, harmonics so harmonics are like multiple frequencies so we are making our base in g so g is around 50 hertz and then it's this is like 50 100 150 200 and so on and the bars are all full, so we can basically filter it down later and kind of like subtract what we don't need. Also make sure that the phase is on retrigger here. That's really important because we want to have our base really stable and not like changing the phase of the wave all the time. So the starting position in the waveform. And step number two is that we place some MIDI nodes. So let's make some MIDI here. With Command Shift M, you can make MIDI. So we'll place three bass notes. All of them will be G. All will have the same length. Just short them like a little bit. You don't want to shorten them like this and you don't want to have them full usually. We'll do this later better. And then you can just copy them around. Make sure that they really start on the lines and not like this, for example. The first one, we want to lower the velocity a bit to so around 50. We will also do this later. And now the most important thing is that we check the octave. So for example, this one is a free tool, span spectrum analyzer. And if you're not sure if you hit the right octave, you want to have the bass so that you have basically a mountain here around the frequency you're putting in. So you see basically notes and frequencies above here. So we want to have a bass in G. So as I said, around 50 hertz or so 49.1 hertz here. And we want to move those until we get it there. So now we can see that there's something at 50 hertz. So if you go to 8,000 here, you can see it a bit better. Nice. So now we have something here. If we go lower, then we are too low. If we go higher, it's too high. And that's actually the mistake most people do. They just put the bass too high if they are a beginner. And it usually is because maybe you don't have like the experience or good speakers or something. But really, you can check that with like a simple analyzer tool like this. So that's the first step. And now it gets to the easy looking but most complicated step in the base. Step number three is the filter automation. And this is like a science. And I really tell you because of my course, I spent like a whole month on bass. And it's more difficult than it looks like. And that's actually where most people fail on, where they kind of like, even if they repeat it, they'll make it really good. So we will need to make the filter automate in order to make this sound nice. So we have like a filter here and this filter has an envelope. So it's basically opened by this envelope. So you can say like the highest position is when the filter gets like opened fully by the envelope and the lowest position is basically where we put our sustain level. So it doesn't even need to close completely. It can close the sustain and then basically goes with the release time completely to zero. I explain that in much more detail in my course, just saying because it's like a science, but for now you just need to understand that you need to shape attack, GK, release and sustain. And well, we just crank the envelope to 100 here. That makes it a bit easier. And the starting point of this filter, turn the resonance completely down. We don't need that here. So let's put some starting point around like 125 for now. And now it's mostly like playing around with these parameters here. So it sounds like this at the moment. 
but 600 is really long. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to calculate that. Like, for example, on 143, I don't know exactly, but I would say like it's 450 milliseconds or something like a quarter note and a 60th note or maybe around like 110 or something. I'll post that in the video um, here on the screen once I edit it, but it can be longer than that, just saying. But we will shape it and we will shape all of those parameters kind of like iteratively until we reach something which really sounds nice. So you want to have like a click and a bass, and you don't want to have too much of that mid thing there. Um, you know, like if I crank this up here, this like thing you want to avoid and you want to make it clicky, but not too short. That doesn't sound bad. Let's check. So here I think you can hear some like humming from the bass. Maybe it's even a bit high. We can check because this one we also have kind of like this and the sustain works together. You need to imagine this like very quick envelopes. So once you play this note, the attack starts kicking in. The attack is zero. So we're starting at the highest point here. So we don't have like an attack time to go there. And then we're falling down the DK time. And if this gets like interrupted, because this is like longer than that, then the release kicks in and it goes to kind of like the level we set here. So as I said, this is, might sound complicated if you want to have a longer explanation. I explain it in detail. For now, understand that this kind of like is also your ending point here in the bass. I think that doesn't sound bad. Now, once we have set up the filter envelope, we can also quickly go here about the level because we need to do one thing. We need to map this really to the velocity and I mapped this to 100%. So we need to put our velocity to 100, then this gets 100% reflect in the volume. And I think it sounds quite good already. So let's check this out and move the kick. But I find it sounds a bit too high. So I would set it up like this, as you have seen, without the kick and then like making it work with the kick. So let's play around a bit. And what I always recommend if you play around, just duplicate the channel because you may not improve it. So you may have may make it worse and then you want to go back and you cannot. So it's easier just like to duplicate it and then AB later. So let's go back to our filter. Yeah, I think that got quite nice now. So you have seen there's not much we needed to do. We haven't set the release time. This is like the least important parameter, but I usually try to make it really short, but not so short that it starts like clicking. And then we have a nice bass. Let's bring this to a better level. So I usually bring it like if I have like block size 8000 around minus 36 here. Or if you have like a lower block size, like 2000 here, then it's more like your minus 42 around. So this depends a bit on the settings you have in here. So if you copy my settings, then you should get around this height. And let's play it now again with the kick. And it's, I think it's pretty amazing. Let's A-B this quickly. So let's check this. This is a bit too high, you know, like it sounded cool in solo, but with everything together, it doesn't sound so like nicely, like baked into the lows. And to be fair, we need to both put both on much. But this is maybe a bit much close, so maybe we open it a bit more. So let's make another copy here. Because I think the truth is somewhere in between. Yeah, I think I like this one. 
So that's the most important step. Believe me, if you have a good base already out of the synthesizer, it doesn't need so much processing, in my opinion. The processing is kind of like just a polishing of it. But if you screw that up, then you won't really need to polish it because it doesn't make it like nicer if you have something which is not nice. So you need to get it first to a nice place. And I would say like spend 80% of the time here and spend 20% maybe of the time on all the rest of the processing. And if we add some processing, it can sound like this. And that will be like kind of for a separate video. So I don't want to show it here or you can find it like in super detail in my course. So see you in the next video, guys.